and uh, I am working in Dell. So, so we have been uh, using uh, Python extensively in our company. And uh, here is Raghavendra from VMware. So there are a couple of more volunteers joining in. So uh, they will be moving across uh, near our laptops to see what you are doing actually. So whether you are coding or not. So, uh, so you can ask help from them and uh, you can do your coding. So I have uh, one slide which is of 117 slides. So we'll not go through all the slides because it's it is. Uh, it will be boring for you. We'll have most of the hands-on session. Okay. So let's get started. So this slide is prepared by Arulana uh, from IIT Delhi. So I'm just taking few of the slides. So Python. Uh, in, in industry, it is called a scripting language also, it is called as a programming language also. So, why programming language? So, scripts is something that you want to automate few things, right? So, you want to automate some server-side uh, server programs or you want to automate some client-side programs and if you want to develop some applications, desktop applications or web applications, you can do using Python, so it is what is a programming language, just like you have a Java or C programming. C you can do low level, right? So it is called as programming language. Similarly, Python is something you can do at a lower level also. Like you have modules like Twisted, Socket, so which you are able to actually develop some pro lower level programs. So there are many languages like C, C++, PHP, Ruby on Rails, and why Python? Why, why do we need Python? So Python is uh, generally used across all the industries like Google uses Python. So if you see in Google, uh, they have every month Python sessions for their employees so that uh, they get to know more about Python because it's easy, it's simple and right? it's uh, productive so it will increase your productivity. So Python is simple. So what do you mean by simple? Is C simple? Anyone tells you who, is, who says C is simple? Anyone says? Has uh, anyone used C before? How many? Okay. So no one says C is simple. Why? Pointers. <laughs> okay. Segmentation part. Code. Okay. Segmentation part. Okay. What else? Can we replace C with Python? No, we cannot. Because most of the Python models are written in C. So this, those are, they are the C extensions basically. So, so simple because the Python uh, is good at writing efficient codes and optimized codes. Let's say you have 10 lines of code in C. And you can write in 3-4 lines in Python. Or if you have five lines in C, you can write in a line in Python. So that's how Python is optimized, right? Because it gives gives a developer most of the APIs to work on. And why beautiful? Because uh, let's say you are in a company and uh, there are few colleagues you have just joined with that company, okay? And there is lot. Let's say there are one. Uh, 10,000 lines of code written in Python. You as a pressure, you can still go ahead and read that code. So it's so simple and it's so beautiful that you can, you, it's like an English. You can, you, just like you know English, right? You can read a book or a novel. Just like you can read the code and you can understand what's happening. So, so Python is easier to learn. So, Python is free open source software. So, so Python is open source licensed, so you can actually use commercially, you can develop your own products and you can sell it and uh, you can use it for non-commercial purpose also. Make sure you have your uh, keep that license in mind because they have certain terms and conditions. So you should ensure that you are uh, adhering to open source license. So what Python can do? So generally programming language should be able to do these many things. It should be able to handle text 
it should be able to administer systems it should do GUI programming when I say GUI programming it can be desktop applications or web programming anything or lower level programming web applications database applications so so Python actually works with many of the databases like MySQL uh, Microsoft SQL Server Postgres Server etc so it is also used in scientific applications if you see even NASA uses Python right? even Yahoo uses almost 180,000 lines of code using Python in their engine as well as the second so called second largest YouTube uh, search engine uses Python for their search so we can see that it's so easier to learn Python and it is so easier to actually implement Python programs. So let's get into a little bit of history. So this guy is the creator of Python or called as father of Python, Guido Van Prosser. So Python was actually created just after Java. Java was actually created on 1990, 1990 and Python 91. So that's where Python stands. It's in between Java and Ruby. So what is Python? So it is, as you know, it is an open source language and it is very simple and it makes you more productive. So why productive? Because it's simple to learn. So when something is simple to learn, it makes you more productive because you know things readily, right? So why it is quick and easy? Let's see what are the details which makes it very quick and very easy. So it is a scripting language. It, it is called as scripting language. It is also called as programming language. You can, you can interpret in any ways. Variable declaration is an unnecessary. So most of the languages use variable declaration, right? So that over it is removed in Python because uh, Python, the father of the Python wants it to be more easier. They don't want to get into complexity. Let Python take care of it for you. Variables are not typed. When I say not typed, it's dynamically typed. Internally, it's dynamically typed. It's not statically typed as uh, you have seen. Let's say int a, right? It allocates some amount of memory, right? When you say Python, allocate a memory for a. What it does is it, it internally does it, it is dynamically typed. When you try to store an integer, it will dynamically store an integer in memory, thinking it's a, it's a it has an integer. When you say it is a string, it checks whether it is a string, and it stores allocates the memory for the string and stores it. So it is dynamically typed. Syntax is very simple, so there is no curly braces and the other things. So we will get, we'll get to know more about this, why it is very simple because there is a lot of indentation concepts and uh, memory management is automatic, there is no malloc, calloc, realloc and there is no return types, type casting, etc, etc so all of these complexities are removed because hence it is quick and easy okay? please uh, stop me if you have any doubts So, we will not be dealing uh, most, I mean, throughout the day with these things. If you are interested, we can touch upon who knows OOPS concepts. Anyone knows OOPS? Oh, there are many. So, should we take OOPS? No. <laughs> because it's easier, again, it's quick and easy. So, the theme of uh, Python is very quick and easy. Right? So, Every language that whenever we start or whenever we read, so this is something we come across, right? How do we type, how do we print hello world? That's not how Python works. So this is how Python works, okay? So, so shall we get started with hands-on rather than PPTs? Okay, we have a lot of content to cover today. So we'll just get uh, started with the hands-on. So all of you have installed Python 2.7. Anyone has installed Python 3? Oh, there are many. 
a VMware uh, workstation and you have extra Linux, you can just put through with Linux. Okay. But maybe you have open clause, right? Some of it. Install in your VMware workstation. Or you have a dual boot. Right? So you can actually boot through that. Or else you can install a Python product. It just takes hardly three minutes. can start working. So at your command prompt you can run Python.
last two. This is this Can anyone in the last row see this? What you can see?
So let's uh, type hello. So if you see here, it works both ways. You give a string input and it gives you output. You give a print, it gives you output. So print is optional. If you put or not, it doesn't matter. It, anyways, whatever input you give, it expects to give some output. So string input is string output. Print is like a... Uh, print is like, in C you have a printf, right? Similarly. And one of the good things in Python is you don't require any library uh, import for any kinds of uh, smaller uh, print apps, scan app, everything. So it assumes everything to be printed or a C. So what happened? It didn't print hello world, why? Is it better? Okay, so what? I have given hello world, right? It didn't print. What should I do? Okay. Now it actually interpreted that right? it has to execute because it's in a file. So file always ends with .py. Okay? So you should rename your file as .py. Whenever you open a file, you rename it as .py and you can put your Python scripts. So all of you have created the file and written some script like hello world. So, so we will go with the variable assignments now. So, since Python is dynamically typed, okay, it doesn't require any types to be defined. No int, no integer, uh, no string, or uh, no character. So, when you say x is equal to four, so Python, it will actually interpret that four is an integer. So, it finds four as an integer. Because the type of four is an integer. So we will see how do I find actually the type of an integer. Okay? So if you see, if you execute type of four, it will actually tell me what is the type of four. So type of four is an integer. So when you say four, x is equal to four, Python will actually allocate a memory which is of integer type and stores that value. Okay? So if you see x into x, right? So Python doesn't know x, capital X. It knows only small x because we have already allocated it. Right? So it threw, threw an exception, name error. Okay? So why name error? Because it's saying the name x, capital X, is not defined. Okay? So you need to, so it is very case sensitive just like any other programming language because uh, you can declare different variables, it may be case sensitive, insensitive, anything. 
So make sure whenever you declare a variable, it doesn't start with a number. Okay, it can start with alphabet. Okay, it can continue as an alphanumeric value, and it can start with an underscore, just like any other language. So if you see here, x value is still 4, even though I executed x into x, I have not yet assigned to any other variable, right? So x value is still 4. So it actually calculated uh, x into x in place, okay? It has not stored in memory. So if you want to store in memory, you have to reassign. So now the x value is 16, okay? So I'll show you how to do multiple assignments in Python. So this is how you do multiple assignments, okay? So let's say whatever values you want to statically declare uh, ahead of your uh, program logic. What you do, what you can do is this is one of the options. You can say you can do comma separated variable assignments. Okay. So what it does is it will actually do a left hand side. It pushes one value to A and B. Uh, assigns uh, is assigned with the two values. So, uh, so we can do some problem on this. So, so given two variables, how do you swap two variables? Can you write that piece of code now? Is it Python? Without using temp, any temp variable. So that is your interview question. So there are two variables. You can assign uh, any value for two variables. Make sure it is uh, swapped. How do you do in Python? If anyone is done, they can raise hands. Okay. So how do you do that? List. Okay. That's not a list. Just to assign it. Okay. A plus B. First do A equal to A plus B. Okay. And then uh, B equal to A minus B. Okay. A is equal to A plus B and B
So what is the output for this? 6 and 4 or 6 and 8? 6 and 8. So, uh, just like integers, Python is also, also intelligent uh, to actually add decimal floating point numbers. You see here, that's how it executes. It can, it understands even decimal, it understands even uh, integers. So you, you need not declare it as a floating type or integer. Since it is a dynamically type, it knows what, what it needs to do. So this is how the exponential operation is done. You have to put double star. So why is 7 by 2 is What should I do if I want to get that decimal value? Possible, right? Always. It should know that it, some value is of floating type. It needs to return the floating type. Else what it does, it targets decimal part and it returns the, the integer value. So what is the value of this? So since we are almost every, everyone is familiar with this, we will go into the strings. Okay? Okay? 
Now if you tell Python, get me the type of the string, uh, type of the variable, what it does? What you have to do? You have to just say type of x. Okay? It will tell the type of the value is actually a string. Python, if you want to actually extend your string and write it over a multiple lines, so this is how you do in Python, right? You have to put triple quotes. See how it is stored actually. So I have put a space, it has given me a space. I have put a new line, it has actually shown me a new line, right? It actually shows you what actually it has stored. It has stored even in new life. Right? See this. When you write an interpreter, it actually showed you what it actually stored. Right? It has given you output as it is. Right? When you are printing something, when you are executing, right? It has, it has actually interpreted what it needs to do, right? For new line, it has actually put a new line, and here it is started, right? But if you see in the previous output, it has blindly put in a line, right? So this is just for a debugging purposes, okay? Interpreter, you can write a script and you can debug also. So now uh, let's, since all of you are done with this, so we'll get something on functions also now, okay? How do we define functions? So can anyone tell why function is used and what is the use of function? Anyone? Okay, repetitive use of a same code, okay? Okay, understanding? Yes, debugging. Okay. So in Python, if you want to write a function, it starts with def. D E F. So D E F is definition. Okay. So it starts with def followed by a function name, name of the function and in brackets it takes any number of parameters it can take any number of parameters okay so this is how function is written in Python okay so dev followed by the function name and then the parameters and the return value ok what it returns? it returns a square of a number so once you write a function you, you need to test it ok square of 4 is 16 So if you have done this, okay, there is a problem for you. You have to write a function to actually take two parameters and do sum of the squares. For example, you take a b and do a square plus b square in Python. So you can write a new function sum of the squares.
So this is your input, okay? You have to write the function. So you can pass even a function within a, I mean to a function, right? You can pass the function object to a, as a parameter to a function. So what it, so you can pass square, so f is equal to square, it gets, gets assigned f is equal to square and x is the value which you have passed here, okay? It returns here output. So you, this is how you can manipulate whatever functions you need, okay? The piece of logic remains the same, but the way you can test is you can pass different functions. Okay? Yeah. 
That is one of the feature in Python. Without passing apps, we can use it. Right? Yes. Without passing apps, we can use. You can still use uh, square. If you forget this f, you just pass x and y. You can still say square of x and square of y. What happens is when you pass this uh, value, so this is a value now. So what happens to a value? Value needs to be assigned to some variable, right? So it gets assigned to f. Then f does the job. Just like this, f does the job, right? Here. It is actually pointing to the same square function, a square object. So am I fast? Or you are able to get, because these are basic and you, you might have uh, used this before also, right? Also, let me know if you need more time so that uh, I can come nearby and it can help you if you need. Even Raghavendra is there, he can help you.
This is how actually if you want to modify y, we define uh, y as a global and the value gets changed global. If you have done uh, with that global and local, uh, can you tell me what is the output of this? One. Somebody told one, somebody told error, and any other answers? Okay. Why is one? Okay. What is the value of this? Okay. Okay. That is the reason. That's what it says. Now, 
Yeah, that is the that is the logic. But why Python threw at first place? It threw it here, no? It didn't threw it here, right? It threw it here. So we didn't pass the as a parent. Okay, correct. So it's searching for the local variable, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. So, so you want to take the value of x global x. So you mention it as global, right? So when you say y is equal to x, it thinks see x is a local variable, right? And x value is not defined anywhere. It's defined after y is equal to x, right? So the execution happens. Okay. The function is called. Then this statement is executed. If this statement is executed, then it comes next. Since it was, since it threw an error, what happened? This was not executed. It threw an error here itself. It says I first I don't know x. Give me value x. So you have two things. You can either initialize the value x before assignment, or you can use the global value. Okay? It, it doesn't take because uh, x is a local variable. How does it not See, whatever you define within functions, variables, is a local variable. Okay. Now, if you want to take a value of a globally assigned variable, then you mention as a global. Okay. Or else we have to pass x value specifically to this. I have not passed x value, right? I have just said f without any parameters. Right? So what you do is, you can mention global x and see what you get the output. If you want to ESN that x is equal to 2, yeah? If you want to ESN that x is equal to 2, yeah? If you want yes. global value of Correct. So, either you assign x value first and then execute this or else mention I want to use global x or else third option is you pass a value to this function right even x you pass here is a local variable ok it's not a global value it's a local variable So if you see here, you can actually say the value that is passed. So I have defined a function difference, okay, which will do, which takes two parameters and does the difference of that. And uh, I say 5 and 2, it gives me 3. Then I say x is equal to 5 and y is equal to 2, it does that same, right? 
So you can actually specify even the what is the variable type. Right? So with this, this is also possible. You can interchange any kind of parameters. Okay. This is an increment function. It takes two parameters, x and amount. Okay? So x value is mandatory. Okay? You need to understand that x value is mandatory, amount is optional. So this is how you specify the default values for a variable. Okay? So what happened is you passed only one value, okay? Python knows that the amount is optional because you have defined as a default uh, value for that, right? So what it did? X is 99, amount, the default value is 1 because there was no assignment here, right? So if you see, the value passed takes the precedence over the default value, right? In case you don't pass, pass the value, then only the default value comes into picture. Let's say you want to write a cube of a, I mean you want to write a function which does a cube operation, right? You take a parameter and it does a cube, right? Cube of that value. So Python has an easier way to write a function, right? If you think that your code is very small, uh, which needs to, which needs one or two parameters uh, it take, uh, to be taken and then do some computation, go for lambda. Okay, so lambda is also a function. Okay, and it and the ex expression. So what it does is it takes the value x and it computes what is the expression, and it assigns q. So if you see here, I have defined a function in one line, right? So this is a function. If you so the lambda function, this is also a function which defines a function, right? And the function is actually rewritten to q. So if you write a def q, it takes two lines, right? You can do it in a line, single line. For this. Yeah. 
which is iterable, right? So this is iterable, two and three. So it takes any number of parameters, a, b, c, whatever number of parameters. Try to use three, four parameters to see you get the output, right? So uh, we still don't know what is this. It is a list. It is like an array. I have defined a array. So in Python it is called as a list. Okay. And one, two, three. This is also iterable. Okay. So what it does is it needs a iterable and finds the smallest value, minimum value. So again, it, it, it can even take a string iterable. It can take a string and it, it should return a minimum value. So how does it know a minimum value? Yeah, this will ask. Yes. Right. So it found that A is actually a lower than all other, so it returned A. So you can even say max, okay? Max of any iterable. If it is a string, list, integers, anything. Okay? Coming up, okay. So you should make sure, make, sure, uh, make use of length also. Then, yeah. so make sure what it is. If you want to know what is the help on that. length of an object, okay. So length takes an object. It can be a number, integer, string, list, dictionary, whatever. It takes an object. It returns me a. The return time is integer. So whatever is after arrow is a return type. Okay. function which takes one parameter it needs to convert to an integer right I have a string value this is of 50 and return me an integer similarly if you want to convert an integer value or any other object to a string use str So 
So, so there is a problem for you now. Okay. Uh, right. So the problem is you have to write a function count digits. Okay. So the name of the function is count digits. So it should take one parameter. Okay. And uh, you have to count the number of digits that you have passed. Let's say count digits of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 will return 5. Okay. Count digits of 5 will return 1. Okay. Count digit of 1 to 10 will return to 10. Okay. You have to, you have to write basically a function which takes one parameter and takes an input that any number of digits. You can test with any number of digits and it should return me what is the count. Okay. Let me know if you need more time to 
Ouais, pas encore. Okay. Mais c'est bon, à tête, c'est... So there is no increment operator okay, in Python. Somebody was using increment operator, so it doesn't work in Python. Minus minus plus plus would work. Okay. <laughs>